Weekly Finds! Well, welcome to this week's Weekly Finds or things I found last week or whatever and I didn't show you before. Let's go through the cool stuff, okay? I got a new Civil War era cavalry sword. Yes, 1861 to 1862, the model 1840. Ring, ring, real deal. Yep, yeah, they were charging on a horse. And if they didn't have a shot left, they'd whip this baby out and whack a molly. Death is never something to joke about, but history is pretty cool. Here's the blade, the handle, even has a little tassel on it, blood stained. And then this cool the grip, really nice. They really did some stuff. Cool fact, weird fact, it's kind of like what a lot of countries do, especially the USA today, but during the war, the Civil War, Germany made these blades and they sold them to both sides. So they just made a profit. So that's one sword. The next sword is a pirate cutlass or a privateer cutlass with the British Royal Navy. A real cutlass. Uh, cool looking. We'll do the thing where we go like this. Gotcha. It's kind of neat. Um, they would put uh, fat, probably from a whale or something on there to preserve the blade, wrap it up supposedly where I got this from this guy that they would um, st I don't know if this is real I mean I keep keep thinking about it but uh, he said that they would store this in a chest in the captain's cabin and there would be two keys like you know like they do for a nuclear launch and they would both have to open that to get this sword out of the case in case of a mutiny um, then I thought about it. Well, wouldn't that be crazy? Kind of silly. They only had one sword, but then I thought, then I looked it up actually, um, that when you're on a ship, you don't have swords around with you. Maybe you have like a little knife and the crew's, you know, ammo and guns and stuff is usually stored below. And so they didn't really have weapons unless, you know, they unlocked it for everybody to use. So then, uh, this would be one of the main things that the captain would have up there in case of a mutiny. So you never know. So that's kind of a cool little fact, I think. You can look it up more and let me know if I'm wrong. I probably could be. I don't know. But this is a, and then this is a Japanese World War II katana, which is really rad. It has what I think is really cool, this mechanism. See how it's stuck in there? Oh, well I pressed it. But you press that down to release it. Oh, I didn't, so maybe it's not that good. But you press that and it undoes itself so that it doesn't fall out when you're running. I always thought that was an issue that you would have in a war with guns and running around when you probably really wouldn't use a sword because, you know, just shoot. But this is a good addition to a modern sword. You know, I think if they had swords now, if they actually did, which I would hope they would, because that'd be super badass, uh, they would have these mechanisms on there. Supposedly there's always something written underneath the wrap, some sort of, you know, something fancy. Um, like, destroy your enemy in the will of the red sun or something. I don't know. So that's what this is. Japanese World War II katana. These are kind of pricey, but they're authentic, so they gotta be pricey. This is a British infantry officer's sword, 1895 to 1897. And I thought this was pretty cool because it has it took me a while to actually find this out. I had to go through like all these books and then online and everything, but I had to find it because of this printing on here. It has the royal sword. And then what really made me find it was, you probably can't see it, but on here has like the Star of David, which was confusing to me. And then there's all these things imprinted in, in on the blade, like calligraphy and 
and um, what's the right word? Victorian type print and stuff and a crown with the sun coming off of it. But they always put such detail in these things and the main service was in the Boer War, I think that's correct, which is a war in South Africa. Pretty cool. I like it. It makes me go and think through my brain what sword I would use or what weaponry I would use if I was ever in battle. I think I came to the conclusion I would probably have a short viking axe and like a roman sword. But that's just me. Okay, and then I printed up some more shirts. I got a lot of these shirts. People are liking them. They come with dust. Whee! Authentic BLD work dust. One of the favorite things I have one here is just the BLD one, but I did it in gold, which I think is pretty cool. But then I thought, oh, let's put the other logo on the hood, right? That's so dope, bro. So now you can be super dope, bro. Finish up this painting. Oh, it kind of reminds me of cells. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess that's the thing about not thinking, is you make things when you don't think. Like abstract art. You just kind of go with it. Then I made this sculpture. Another thing is you just go with it. I think it's pretty cool. cool. It's made out of epoxy and sequoia wood. Made a giant cutting board, which is neat. If not, you can, I don't know. Surroundings. Got this mini cheese. These are kind of silly, but I don't know. I put a little cheese on there. It says BLD mini cheese for those mini cheese eaters. Um, and this, I got some babies now. Some little babies. 50 cent babies that everyone loves the little babies and I've been actually taking them and putting them in my pocket and going up to people and asking if they would like to have a baby and they usually go oh you want that's strange why are you asking me to have a baby and then I give them a baby okay and then this is a metal can thing that I found put tea in there or whatever you want and that's pretty cool now I'm gonna move the camera so you can see some other things that I've made first I'll go like this this is new it's really really cool I really really like that it's a 3d uh, laser art with a little mink skull inside of it wow that's super neat okay oh oh and then over here is the new addition that I did to the store it's called parts world soon there will be a sign that says Parts World up there. And it's Parts World. I'm trying to talk fast because last time the video was so long that it took so long to upload, so I have to be quicker and I want your attention. $2 parts, $5 parts, and $10 parts. There's so many parts, lots of 1800s iron type stuff. You know, things like this. You know, cool Art Deco things from a long time ago. You know, a lot of the pieces are used for lamps, you know. Things that are pretty neat. They even put gloves in here so you can go through there and look look through and get dirty. Then I have wood slabs, like little off cuts and stuff, because I always hear people go walking with their husband, and it always happens with my family too when I go to an arty store. Hey honey, you could probably make something like that. Well guess what? You can now because it's right here, and then you'll figure out how long it actually takes to do it. So it's right here. Congratulations if you want to have a project. Here's some stuff. <sighs> Maybe I have asthma. I don't know. I'm not breathing too good today. <laughs> but hey, thanks. Come on down. It's Christmas time and I just remembered something else. Here they are. Got these coins from India. And they are they were already made with little necklace things. And they're kind of cool, so I put chain on them so you could wear them, like Game of Thrones. But they're all India coins, and they have chains, and these are all clock chains from Cuckoo Clocks. So there's a whole bunch of these things. They're pretty nifty. So yeah, 
thanks for watching and uh, come on down. Let's get our Christmas presents. Don't go to the stupid non non cool Christmas store. You know, come on down here. Bye. Weekly.